to know more such amazing stories from Indian history, click the bell icon and subscribe to Live History India. Think of the Muslim League and the abiding image is that of its births with the sole intention of the partition of India and the creation of Pakistan by the League's founder, Muhammad Ali Jinnah. The reality is very different. The All India Muslim League, which was founded in 1906, did not initially have the partition of India in mind. The intention was the emancipation and empowerment of the subcontinent's Muslims. Jinnah was not a founder. He joined the League only in 1913. In fact, Pakistan as an idea was first articulated by the philosopher-poet Muhammad Iqbal at the 25th session of the Muslim League at Allahabad much later in 1930. It took another decade for Pakistan to be formally proposed in Lahore in 1940, just seven years before partition actually happened. So how did things turn? The prime mover of the Muslim League was the Nawab of Dhaka, Khwaja Salimullah. He had supported the first partition of Bengal in 1905, it was a pet project of the British Viceroy George Nathaniel Curzon. It was an attempt to diminish the influence of nationalism in Bengal and, as an extension, to provide demographic advantage to the largely Muslim Eastern Bengal. Nawab Salimullah was frank in his support for this partition. He declared, The partition has given a new life to the people in the Eastern province. They are feeling a refreshing sense and a relief from the thraldom of Calcutta. The Nawab claimed that this partition benefited children of the soil, both Hindus and Mohammedans. While the Nawab claimed that this partition was important to empower East Bengal, which was far from Calcutta and its prosperity, the counter-criticism was that the Nawab was operating in a silo more for the preservation of privileges of Eastern Bengal's Muslim elite than the emancipation of Muslims in general, and that his stance was held by the leverage of a large loan from Lord Curzon's administration. In December 1906, a group of Muslim elites from the subcontinent gathered at Esan Manzil, Nawab Salimullah's residence in Dhaka. They met under the aegis of the All India Muhammadan Educational Conference. The Nawab proposed the formation of a political association delivering on an aspiration articulated by the members of the conference earlier in 1906. The proposal was duly supported and the Muslim League was born. In 1907, the League moved to Lucknow, its eventual headquarters, and formally welcomed Sultan Muhammad Shah, the third Aga Khan, as its honorary president. Officials were appointed from different provinces. A constitution, which came to be called the Green Book, was adopted. The focus was on empowerment and building social capital. Among other institutions, Aligarh Muslim University emerged as a hub of intellectual capital for the League, but it was still largely oriented to Indian nationalism. Among some faculty and students, the tilt towards a break would grow stronger in the 1940s. Indeed, until the late 1930s, the League largely remained an elitist organization in letter and spirit. But the tide was turning. The Muslim masses in the hugely influential and populous East were driven to leaders like Abul Qasem Fazlul Haq, who, though a protege of Nawab Salimullah, managed to build a grassroots and a farmer and worker focused base. Interestingly, Haq, who followed Jinnah as League president, had several ideological and political run ins with Jinnah. Haq fought for the Muslims in the East, 
who, he pointed out, were being brutalized and marginalized by both Hindu and Muslim zamindars. In 1936, he formed the farmer-focused Krishak Praja Party. Haq called for the abolition of the zamindari system and even asked for self-rule in decidedly un-Muslim league language, Swaraj. Jinnah cannily wooed this huge base in order to expand the league's universe. In the Bengal provincial elections of 1937, Huck's party came in third after the Congress and the League. Huck proposed a coalition with the Congress. It was declined. Huck turned to the League. Jinnah gladly accepted. In October 1937, Huck formally joined the Muslim League. It became the first major step to broaden the League's base. On 23rd March 1940, at a meeting of the Muslim League in Lahore, Haq, urged by Jinnah, presented the demand for Pakistan. It was adopted by the League and came to be known as the Lahore Resolution. <music> 